My mom is a big history buff, so it was only fitting that moments before I proposed to Whitney, it was our past, not our future, that flashed before my eyes. Where and who we came from is just as important to this story as how we met. <clears throat> Ladies first. Whitney's parents are both East Coasters through and through, with salt water from the Atlantic Ocean practically coursing through their veins. And though Brian and Cindy now live by the country club credo, it wasn't always that way, and they most certainly earned it. They are both fighters from Lawrence, Massachusetts, a working class blue collar town built along the Merrimack River. Cindy's mother, Dorothy, had a passion for music and dancing, all the while working 25 years in the district court system. Perhaps that's why decades later, her daughter, Cindy, would act as the Supreme Court for both her family and social circle. George F. Brown was a member of the United States Army, and three years after the invasion of Normandy, he married Dorothy, and they eventually had Georgie and their only daughter, Cynthia. Cindy moved around a lot as a young girl. And though she was shy, she eventually came out of her shell as a teenager. High school dances were her battleground, and she was a general. Brian's father, Neil, and his mother, Joan, met while they were both in high school in Lawrence. Neil joined the Marine Corps right after graduation, and after his return from Korea, he married Joan on January 20th, 1952. At the time of his passing, 66 years later, the two were still husband and wife, Semper Fi. Brian was one of four boys and quickly realized to get ahead in this world, he'd have to do it through studying. He was an ultra-focused, competitive student and wrestler. This is the face of a man who will pound you to the ground and take you down to Chinatown. Brian and Cindy met at a Christmas party in 1980. Though Brian claims he'd originally fallen for Cindy when he saw her that summer at a bar called Shaffy's. Sounds like old Bri didn't have the stones to make a move. And I shouldn't joke, he also ran his own company by the time he was 34. The two were married in 1984 in Newburyport, Massachusetts, where they lived until 1986, the year this one was born. Whitney Lee Mitchell grew up in North Andover, alongside her two sisters, Megan and Morgan, and their little brother, Dane. She was sweet, a little aloof, and very timid. Notice how excited she is to be leaving the soccer field. The only thing she wasn't afraid of was sleepovers with friends. Donnie! As she got older, she never saw a mirror she didn't like. She loved to read, and she adored dancing. As for her sister Morgan, not so much. Whitney's high school friends became her second family. The five of them even coined a super original nickname, the Fab Five. Clever girls. She'd go on to study at UMass, create new friendships, and after 22 years of life in New England, she rolled the dice on a new world out west, Los Angeles. Legend has it that Whitney lived in over 27 different apartments throughout the west side of LA. And though she was a bit of a nomad, she discovered a passion for fitness instruction in the sleepy town of Hermosa Beach. The weather was perfect, and everything was good. But Whitney's lifeblood has always been her family, and it always will be. And after nearly a decade in the sun, she began plotting a return home until some idiot came along and threw a wrench in those plans. Farming was the common thread for my maternal grandparents. Evelyn Arp and Lawrence Bine were both raised on farms in eastern Iowa. They met at a dance in a small country town, and in 1931 they were married. They began farming during the Great Depression, starting their family of four on land that had been in the Bine family since the 1800s. My mother, Ginnelly, was the last child born. 
this family portrait was taken in 1955, just months before her dad passed when she was just four years old. The work ethic that Lawrence passed along was not lost though, and she carries that torch with her to this day, in both her hands and her mind. She would go on to be a writer, editor, and historian. World War II brought my other grandparents together. Norma Hitzman and Alan Swaim met in Italy, where they were both stationed. She was an army nurse, and he would eventually become a colonel. They got engaged in Naples and married shortly thereafter. If you think the generation before us had a thing for the armed forces and getting married, you'd be right. The colonel was a hopeless romantic and would write hundreds of love letters to Norma whenever he was away on duty, each with his trademark signature, forever, ever, and always, your Alan. They had four children and moved often throughout Germany and the US. My father, Jim, was the second youngest. Forced to make friends at every stop along his childhood, he found commonalities among his foreign peers instead of differences. While his older brothers would follow in their father's footsteps towards the military, Jim followed his own path and found the 60s. My parents met at the University of Iowa their junior year. By Christmas they were engaged and by May they were married. My older sister Quemby was born in 1977 and this little engine of a family was off and running. But there was still room for improvement. Hello world. My two best friends growing up were my imagination and my big sister. She taught me how to dress, how to drive, and how to fly. Our family spent most of our time camping or in costume. Eventually, I grew up and made actual male friends. My family grew when Quimby met Michael and they had Kinley. Meanwhile, I was still in costume. I eventually found a more suitable outlet for showmanship through TV production, and after living in Chicago, it was only fitting I'd head west. I landed in Hermosa Beach. For nearly five years, I worked relentlessly in TV and partied relentlessly by the beach. Shredded. My friends began getting married, and I began wanting more. Then, one night, I met Whitney in the form of a direct message via social media by way of a dating app on my mobile device, the modern equivalent of a sock hop. We hit it off instantly and did everything together. We spent a weekend in New York City within days. She met my family within a month and she moved into my place that fall. What I love most about Whitney is that I don't know what I love about her most. She cracks me the hell up, and she is a relentless, beautiful, oddity of a person that's absolutely dedicated to me. And she was from the moment we met. We dated for two years in Hermosa before a job opportunity would take us to New York, so long as I said yes. But I wasn't going anywhere until she said it first. The rest, as they say, is history. Study your past and appreciate those that came before you. It may help you understand who you came to be with. Whitney and I are part of a much greater love story than just our own. Now it's our chapter, and I'd say it's off to a good start. <laughs>